Welcome to the Why on Earth Community's Stewardship and Sustainability podcast series. Today we have a really special episode for you as we are at the Three Sisters Sovereignty Project with Fallon Jacobs. Hi, Fallon. Tago. Gaweni Osta Jock. Tago. And Tiffany Cook. Tago. And uh, what's happening here in central New York is an absolutely spectacular and a very important story. Uh, not only for indigenous sovereignty, not only for what women leaders and community are doing, uh, but truly for our whole country and for our whole society. And I'm so excited to dive into our conversation. And uh, before we get started, let me just tell you a little bit about our guests. So Tiffany Cook, immediately to my right, is a grandmother and mother of three. She runs a successful juicing and nutritional support initiative which brings healing through food to the tribe. Tiffany also has a farm and indoor facility where she grows all of her own microgreens for her business, helping people get off of their diabetes pills, heal, and detox from the poisonous environment surrounding them. Fallon Jacobs at the other end is a mother of four children who has worked closely with the community of the Aquasasne on economic development labor market information studies, and small business support. As a fierce defender of sovereignty and human rights, Fallon spent 12 years in successful court battle against the Canadian Border Service Agency, precipitated by an egregious harassment at the border where she was subjected to unprotected uranium exposure, resulting in the loss of her baby. The agency was found guilty of six discrimination counts by the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal, the federal courts, and the federal appeal courts of Canada. Fallon now works with Indigenous youth and families to rekindle, restore, and enhance their sense of cultural identity with land-based teachings and community connections across the province of Ontario. Gawenyosta Jock spends most of her time as a homemaker caring for her five children. She's in the middle, if you haven't figured that out. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're pointing this out a little bit for video. She has helped develop traditional support, cultural teachings, and preservation within the tribe. She is currently enrolled at the Native Education and Training College in a one-year program to be healing and wellness counselor. Gawenyosta has always been compassionate about her people and community and wishes to continue working with women, men, and youth who suffer from domestic violence, sexual assault, as well as help others to regain their cultural identity. Gawaniosta is also a self-taught seamstress and has a small business making traditional dresses as well as designing her own clothing line. Now, some of you may have heard of the Mohawk people and we'll be talking about <laughs> Uh, what this whole movement of returning to the ancestral mm -hmm. homelands is all about. And, and if I could, maybe Fallon, uh, ask you to kind of kick us off in uh, talking about what, what's happening here and, and, and why are we, we here at this particular place? Um, this is our ancestral uh, soils, our territories. And um, way back when, prior to colonization, this is where we had originally um, lived on the lands here. Um, and you know, colonization happened and reservations happened and small boxes were placed in areas where we had to live on. Um, so we've had this beautiful opportunity to um, partner with the Waterfall Unity Alliance um, to come and return back to our ancestral soils to build our community back up. Um, I think that our youth need this and um, it's just really important to us. So we've actually established the Three Sisters Sovereignty Project. Um, you have anything to add to that? Um, <clears throat> No, I think um, once we get into this, you're gonna, we're gonna be talking about it also. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, you're good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I'm wondering, 
Gwen Yosta, <laughs> could you tell us a little bit about your name and what it means and how that relates to the work that you're doing uh, for the community more broadly and also here for this project? Uh, well, Gomaniasta means um, I carry a message or I make good words. Um, I guess uh, now that I'm an, I'm a, an adult, um, <clears throat> I'm living up to my name and um, I have many messages. <laughs> um, but as far as the work, um, I've been on my healing journey since I was 30, so for the past six years, and uh, now I'm just to the point where I'm ready to give back and help other people um, start the process and figure out, put the pieces back together to their own puzzles and uh, just their healing journeys. and. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Tiffany, you with healing have been doing a lot with mm -hmm. the plants in particular. Yep. And uh, you've been making very delicious and very healthful mm -hmm. juices for people. And I got to try this myself the other day. It was amazing. Um, and thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, and I'm wondering if, if you, you've shared with me a bit over the last few weeks about some of the conditions at the reservation. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could describe a little bit what's been going on there with the people in terms of some of the uh, industrial pollution and everything and, and how you've been helping with the work you do with the plants. Mm -hmm. Well, the green drink was designed to help with uh, detoxing the body, especially with the heavy metals. And um, um, it also is uh, helping people to get off a lot of their medications that they're on. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that with the environment, a daily detox is needed in order to even have any kind of, uh, you know, um, healthy life. Mm -hmm. So, um, especially on the reservation, I feel like we need it every day. Yeah, and it's my understanding on the reservation that there's essentially a Superfund site resulting from industrial pollution, right? From a couple of different yes. factories. Yeah. Can you, like, well, I forget what the companies are that were there. Not not that this is necessarily about calling out any mm -hmm. particular companies, because this is something mm -hmm. that's been going on all around the country and all around the world, but just so people have a bit of context um, around the specifics at the reservation, I think that would be helpful. Well, um, one of them was uh, GM. And one was Alcoa. GM and Alcoa. They were plants, yeah. Right. And they were making all manner of industrial mm -hmm. products, materials with mm -hmm. incredibly toxic byproducts, right? And they were... it's, it's actually still there in mm -hmm. the ground. Yeah. And they've covered it up thinking that it's safe just by topping it off with topsoil. Right. So it's it is... also in the in the the waters yeah. close by that come down into our water. Mm-hmm. And um, just it's this airborne. past spring, they yeah. started the dredging, so they were bringing everything back up, and it, then it was airborne again. And mm -hmm. yeah, so there's like our our uh, waters are contaminated with PCBs, so there's an advisory that we can't eat any of the fish um, mm -hmm. from the waters because of the uh, levels of mercury and stuff like that. And you know that's why Tiffany has the green drink to get those heavy metals out of the bodies because then the mercury and the PCBs start um, reacting with other substances that are in the body and it's really not good, right? It starts breaking your system down. But um, Tiffany had mentioned Alcoa and who'd you say? GM. GM and then there's also Reynolds and then there's Domtar. Mm -hmm. So we had a tremendous amount of um, toxic sites around us but that's just really how it was planned out I guess not by us obviously mm -hmm. but that's really how they put sites onto lands as they do it around reservation areas where there's mm -hmm. the indigenous peoples you know like not only do they put us put the reservations on like the crappiest soil areas but they also put them on the boundaries in case 
there's any type of invasions that should happen from another country, they would have to go through the indigenous peoples first. So we're always the ones that are defending everything. Mm. And so our land that we have on the reservation in Akwizasana is not the best soil. Um, like Tiffany had said, like a lot of the um, toxins are still trapped in the soil because they didn't they didn't extract and pull the soil out and ship it all and have it cleaned and refresh the soil there they've actually just put it into containers it's in the ground and then they just put a layer one layer of gravel and topsoil and so mm -hmm. what happens when we have summer heat is the condensation it's all airborne right like the moisture if it rains it comes up through the soil um and these these Top, these sites are like terrible. I remember being a little girl and seeing all these big smokestacks, right? Mm -hmm. And just billowing into the air. And even if we like wanted to go to like the closest little city, which would have been the city of Cornwall, um, you would even, it would, you would smell. smell. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. It was Dompar and that was a paper mm -hmm. mill, but it was just gross because they were just, you know, I don't know if there was any regulations or what, but they all had their their um, pipes right into the water, and so it was just like draining. And it's international water, so who's gonna regulate it, right? Like, is no. it gonna be American, Canadian, New York, Ontario, Quebec? Like, who? Nobody. So they just get away with dumping everything in there, and so it's always up to the people in the community to um, be strong and say like we've had enough like we we you know you can't be doing this like yeah. the cancer rates are through the roof and diabetes um, and a, a lot of birth defects mm -hmm. too now with the mm. young mothers having mm. babies mm. there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, difficulties like just just being able to give birth to their babies and um, that's the amount that we've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just make one point too? Mm -hmm. um, the other point is, is that um, that's the reason why I started growing inside. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the whole, you know, concept of the green drink was to grow as much as I could inside so that, you know, like it could really help with the environment mm -hmm. problem. Mm hmm so that it would help to detox our people just by growing herbs and greens and microgreens so yeah that's a that's a, the biggest reason why I started growing inside and i love uh your name Kachichahawe Kachichahawe which means carrying the flowers yeah and you're from the, the, maybe you could tell us a little about the clan system and your clan and how that relates to the healing work you're doing um, well, the bear clan is um, is the medicine, mm -hmm. so um, it's definitely uh, um, something that's really important. So, um, yeah, uh, I feel like uh, not only do that, but I try to help in other ways of healing, like just uh, especially a lot with children. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm, I have a really close bond to a lot of children in the community and I believe that's why is because of the because of my clan mm. yeah yeah I think it's just her energy because all kids love her just uh. kids that just <laughs> meet her yeah yeah, yeah. and Gwenyosta you're from a different clan right and yes. can you share a bit about that uh well I'm wolf clan and um there's so with the Mohawk people there's three clans um there's bear, wolf, and turtle, and uh, both of my sisters are bear, and I'm I'm wolf. Um, so all my kids are wolf, and that's how we carry on our our clans is through our mothers. So um, and what is the significance of wolf clan? What's that special identity that you're carrying? Uh well. They always say that uh, we're very political. Okay. <laughs> we're <Yeah>. always uh, <laughs> arguing and. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that. But <laughs> standing yeah, up. Yeah, you and, can. You uh, should tell. Your foot down. You can even tell in babies when they're wolf clan when they're born. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because my granddaughter's a wolf. 
Uh huh. Yeah, and she's more vocal. She's a lot like Gooey. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. We don't take shit from nobody. All right. <laughs> I've noticed that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really beautiful. And so you've got at the reservation that uh, the Mohawk people were uh, didn't decide to move there necessarily, mm -hmm. right? This was no. all part of a history that's played out over centuries with the incursion of the Europeans mm -hmm. going back many centuries. Mm -hmm. And now where we're situated as we're recording this, it's at this beautiful waterfall house in central New York, right near Fultonham, near Schoharie in the uh, Schoharie Valley, south of the Mohawk Valley. Mm -hmm. And these lands here are in pretty good shape in terms yeah. of not having a whole lot of industrial pollution. And so it's amazing that you're in the process of coming back here to the homelands and to grow the food and grow the medicine here mm -hmm. as part of the Three Sisters Sovereignty Project. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, Fallon, maybe I'll ask you, in terms of the, the history, the backstory, and what's happening now and how that relates to prophecy, what What's the significance of the three of you being here right now? Um, well, first of all, my name is Dale Hundate. You didn't talk about my Ganyankeha name yet. I didn't get there yet. Okay. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> um, the significance of us being here with prophecy? Um, I think that while well, we had been discussing a lot of things for quite some time and how do we get to a place where we're able to attain something like this, like it always seemed like there was just something bigger that we were supposed to be doing and mm -hmm. we were trying to just go throughout life um, doing what we needed to do, you know, that like I don't even want to say it's Western, but kind of Western of just getting the bills paid stuff like that but there was always something that was bigger and there was something more and it was on a larger level and we weren't really able to identify exactly what that was because we had so many several little projects and then how do we attain all of these projects and then how are we supposed to attain all of those projects when we were in such a tight boundary line by a reservation? Because really we wanted it to be more like uh, uh, a good friend of mine, his name is Salt. He always, um, shout out to Salt. Mm -hmm. Anyways, he had always considered reservation to be preservation. Like we're supposed to be looking at it as a preservation to preserve what we have and take it from there to the next level, right? So. Now we're in Skahari Valley at the Waterfall House and um, there's just a beautiful environment here because of the trees like and the medicines, the natural medicines, the natural root systems that are here in the ground because the, the soil is so healthy here, right? And we even had went down to the waterfall and we drank right out of the water and it was really clean and sweet and like we can't drink the water at home like we can't just go down to the river and grab a cup and drink it well we could but do you really want mercury in your body but here you're able to just scoop the water and drink it if you want so i think that when we have a cleaner environment and we're eating cleaner the air is cleaner our thoughts become cleaner um, and we're able to move forward with all of our projects and that's really um, everything that's natural because we're not industrial people we we see another way of moving forward where it's a little bit it's sustainable on on the ground level because we are natural people we recognize that we are nature we're a part of nature we're not we're not above nature mm -hmm. And Dea Hundate, mm -hmm. I was going to ask yeah. you about this, so mm -hmm. my apologies, I didn't get to it as quickly, but uh, I love what your name means also, mm -hmm. and I think it really relates to what healthy landscapes yeah. have, right? So, yeah, and so... Will you tell us what it means? Well, throughout my life, Dea Hundate means bright green grass, and so um, I found out kind of learning right what my name meant by living because my name's pretty old um it was passed down to me by my great great grandmother's best friend um so 
that's pretty old. Um, <clears throat> but what I'm finding out in my lifetime with my name is that uh, it's hard to accept when something's gloomy or dim because my name has bright in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm always mm -hmm. doing what I can to brighten the situation or shine some light on it and um, create that foliage, like that bright, you know, that bright environment. Like, And I think that's how I've become so positive and optimistic is because it's part of my name, I think, so. That's so beautiful. I, I love we were all down at the waterfall mm -hmm. earlier this afternoon and we had quite an adventure. Um, <laughs> we, we actually walked through the river to get to mm -hmm. another spot by the waterfall and it was cold water and we had a lot of fun. And, um, and I noticed along the way there were a bunch of beautiful patches of very bright green mosses and other mm -hmm. green growing things. And it just brought me right back to my childhood and to the incredible hopefulness and, and nourishment it, mm -hmm. that I experience anyway mm -hmm. when I see these very bright green growing mm -hmm. things. And I'm just, I'm wondering, you know, how much that by itself is medicine for people. It, it feeds our spirits, yeah. you know, just being in the, in that environment and it just feels like home and it just feels like that's just where we belong. And, you know, like what Fallon's saying, how we've had to become like a, accustomed to the Western society and like have jobs and whatnot, but, and we never feel like we are in our natural element until mm -hmm. we're until we're back you know mm -hmm. what i mean and like all right we're home now and we can just enjoy our lives and our surroundings and it really um feeds our spirits you know absolutely and i want to just share that we were while we were down at the waterfall we had uh the opportunity to take some really beautiful photos and some videos and, and those should be on the website three sisters org for you to check out and I don't know I'm sure we'll talk it over in terms of whether we put some of the funny outtake videos on there too but there, we had a lot of fun down there right yeah. and just so much laughter and joy yeah. I could just tell that that being there was um, uh, so uplifting mm -hmm. yeah 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 a little bit of goofing around too right mm -hmm. that's good medicine yeah laughter is good medicine too yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get us through anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering also, I, I think, you know, some of our audience is probably familiar with Three Sisters and what that is referring to. And Tiffany, I know you're uh, getting ready for the first round of gardens and growing here. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you could tell us a bit about what, what Three Sisters means in the garden. Um, it means corn, beans, and squash, mm -hmm. and um, I'm hoping to get uh, all heirloom seeds, and we're going to start stocking them. Mm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So even in addition to the food that's being grown here, it becomes a repository of some really robust heirloom seeds yeah. as well, mm -hmm. which probably becomes a, a beautiful resource for the broader community as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's wonderful. And... I know some of our permaculture friends are familiar with the idea of guilds and planting certain plants together where they really thrive and flourish together and mm -hmm. the, the beans are nitrogen fixing and yeah. maybe you could tell a little bit about how they all work together. Why is it such a good uh, set of three to grow together? Because um, the corn grows the tallest and then the um, uh, beans and squash, they grow to the ground so the corn acts as a shade for them at the hottest points because they like it cooler. Yeah. Yeah. So they all go really happy yeah. together. And then the beans just like to uh, spiral around the spiral corn. Spiral around the corn. Yeah. And then like even uh, we have a, um, a food song that we do um, during ceremony called Gyonghekwa and uh, we do that um, and our 13 ceremonies throughout the year. And even when we do the dance, um, the men are, the men get up and they start in a line going around. Then the women get in between and at one certain point, um, the women act as if they're the, the beans, hmm. and the men are the corn, right? And then so we weave in and out, like as if we're going around the corn, you know? Mm -hmm. So 
Beautiful. Yeah. I think that's old though, you know, I really think that that's old because I feel like it just were only in the last couple years that it's coming back because um, some people don't, some people don't do it like that and I think they just, you know, things have been forgotten mm -hmm. or not taught. They mm -hmm. grow everything separate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it should all be grown together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm, I'm really struck by with your vision for the Three Sister Sovereignty Project right here is building a longhouse mm -hmm. for education and for mm -hmm. the continuation and preservation of the cultural knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I also know for you that the preservation of the language itself is essential. Absolutely. And yes. uh, yeah, maybe you could describe for us what, what's going to be built here next year and what will this look like for people? Well, we hope to start the uh, longhouse come spring. Um, Excuse me. Um, and uh, the longhouse is the first thing on our list of mm -hmm. to do. Um, and then we want to get the cannery up or the cookhouse. Uh, the cookhouse is where we, uh, all the women go to cook, you know, for ceremonies or for any type of gatherings. Um, it's almost like a that's where everyone gathers, you know, to share food, to share like sus substance and whatnot, and uh, um, nourishment. Um, and then we want to get the the language school up um, because that's what connects us to to both worlds, you know, this world and and the sky world. Um, that's our connection to the earth. That's our connection to the plant. To, uh, to the animals, to um, just the other, the other world there, mm -hmm. um, and our names are uh, also, that's how we connect, um, we always introduce ourselves and where we come from to the plant so that they know, like, you know, who we are and um, especially when we need them to need their help, you know, for different sicknesses and whatnot. So the language, though, um, is really, really important because uh, there's been a huge uh, growth in the number of fluent speakers now in the younger generations, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of, uh, there's there's been a lot of um, programs that were developed specifically for language where even adults can go take a two-year program where it's strictly Mohawk and they they come out and they're able to be teachers, Mohawk uh, language teachers. Um, and then uh, back home we have the Akwazasne Freedom School, um, which is a Mohawk immersion school. Um, I, I went to that school, uh, my, my kids go to that school, um, my 10-year-old uh, daughter is, uh, is a fluent speaker, um, it's just really important, you know, it's part of our identity and mm -hmm. that's what keeps us strong and our mind strong and gets us through a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Our language is really colorful too. Uh -huh. Like it's very vibrant. You know, like uh, English language is just very, sh like kind of streamlined. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not, it, in order to describe something in the English language, we'd have to say like yellow, orange, blue, or whatever. But in our language, it's so much more vibrant that it encompasses that feeling and what you're mm -hmm. seeing. So, something might mean like it's the color of the sunset on a summer day so then you're like wow yeah. right because you think of the sunset on a summer day and you're like they're gorgeous yeah. you know so that's really um what the language is like mm. so it's very beautiful yeah it's mm -hmm. not really like what like um at the chair you know on its squala mm -hmm. it doesn't mean the chair it, it actually talks about um I believe the legs, like of what's holding you up underneath, hmm. you know, that what's keeping you up above above the floor. Um, so yeah, the the language is really uh, 
I don't know. Like you could say one word, and then when you translate it to English, it's like a whole sentence. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. It's so rich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'm really I'm really excited about what is happening with the language and the opportunity for mm -hmm. there to be more education resources mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. around the language. And, yeah. and for that to go along with the experiences of walking through the forest and to the gardens and down to the waterfall, mm -hmm. it's, it's a really kind of holistic approach, mm -hmm. an immersion approach that I think will be really powerful for people. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me uh, just share with the audience that you can go to threesistersproject.org uh, to check out some of the videos and photos and more information about the vision for the project here. And also, right now, it's so important that we support the project at whatever level works for us. And you can go to the website to figure out the link to gofundme.com slash f slash three sisters sov. And we'll include this link in the show notes as well. And right now, uh, the, the initial budget is a little over $100,000 uh, to get things going with the longhouse yeah. and the gardens and uh, to really get this powerful, beautiful project underway in central New York. And w regardless of where you're located, uh, uh, my hope is that you'll, you'll engage and you'll support and help make this a reality. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, one of the things I, I want to make sure to share for our audience to help connect a dot that I gather most people may not really know about, when Ben Franklin was f helping to frame up the Constitution for the United States, mm -hmm. a lot of the core key ideas that he brought to the convention actually came from the Mohawk people and from the Iroquois Confederation, mm -hmm. the right? Law, right? And mm -hmm. so. Maybe you could tell us a little about this, but I, I think this is such an important link to the, the culture and the society we're sharing more broadly here in the United States and, you know, wherever we're finding uh, democracy around the world at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, the core, the core elements of the Guyana Lago, the great pieces, or the great laws, righteousness, peace, love. Peace. Well, they say power too, but it's yeah. not, power is not like, you wouldn't say power like, uh, like you I, have a higher authority. Yeah, we don't like, like to that. use the power anymore because we see how people yeah. have Abused interpreted it. power <laughs> mm -hmm. in another system. But yeah. so in our ways, power is like, it's that responsibility. Yeah. It's a responsibility. It's your, um, like your inherent, um, what's your responsibility to? Who are not here yet. Mm -hmm. mm. We were taught as babies, we always have to look out for the next seven generations. Like that's something that they teach us all throughout our lives. Mm -hmm. Everything's based off of that. Mm -hmm. And it's all about peace. It's all, everything is about peace, like maintaining a peace or, you know, and um, using your voice you know, and, and how we come to make decisions is through consensus. Mm. It's not, uh, we don't like vote in with uh, ballots and say whatever. It's just, it's a, it's a lot of dialogue and conversations that have to happen to come to a consensus. And if the people don't agree on something on that night, then the issue is put under the pillow for the night. And then you come back to it the next day, or however long it's going to take to for your community to come to a consensus to be able to make a decision to move forward. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's so that's part of peace, right? Because everyone's voices are heard and then your peace is always just something that you've always done. And I mean, if you're having a hard day or you, not a hard day, but if you're going to disrupt the peace, then maybe you should go be alone in the woods somewhere or mm -hmm. go fasting or go take care of yourself, your self care, whatever that looks like so that um, you can keep that scone or that peace within you so that the peace you have peace around you you know so that that's not like uh, you just keep the peace yeah it's so important right even when we're preparing food for ourselves for our mm -hmm. family 
if we're in a bad space to take some time to mm -hmm. adjust that, right? Yeah. It's such an important practice. Even when I sew something, yeah. you know, because my energy goes into the whatever I'm making and intentions. Yeah. Good intentions. Keep your intentions well, right? Because otherwise, I mean, you put something not so well out, it's going to come right back. So yeah. just do your work, your inner work with issues. If you have issues, take care of them, heal them, yeah. and move forward so that you're just peaceful. Peaceful and joyous. Yes. Yeah. That sounds fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Goeniosta, you I saw you sewing earlier today some amazing, amazing skirts. And some of the pictures uh, taken at the waterfall, obviously, you guys were wearing these absolutely beautiful garments. And yeah. um, you were doing stitch patterns I didn't even know existed. Um, it's incredible what you're creating and what you're sharing. And I, I know if folks support the project at a certain level, mm -hmm. um, they'll be able to get a skirt themselves. Yeah. And uh, anyway, tell us a bit about what, what's that for you when you're making these these beautiful skirts and garments, What what's that process like? Uh, well, I, I, um, it's actually a very long process because some, I don't know if people expect uh, to just say, okay, I want a dress and somebody just hurries up and does a dress real quick. Um, I can't do it. Like I, I, I take a lot of time and I really look at the fabric like does this is this gonna suit this person you know is this gonna look really look nice on this person um, do these colors you know match the person well um, and I'm not gonna make something where I know they're not gonna be happy with it or not even want to wear it you know mm. so um, I'm very detail oriented and so that's kind of my uh, short coming a little bit because that does slow the process down <laughs> mm. um, just because sometimes I think about it too much like is she really gonna like this you know um, or even them because um, I don't only make skirts I make all kinds of uh, clothing traditional clothing for men for kids um, everyday wear I've done um, Clothing lines for um, couture, uh, high fashion, um, ready to wear. That's really my passion is the ready to wear and mm. the high fashion stuff. Um, but as far as the skirts, um, I really enjoy making them. You know, um, excuse me. I go to uh, a lot of the quilt shops and I really I get the uh, the good material and mm -hmm. it's really got to speak to me or like pop out at me and yeah yeah the ones I've seen are, are exquisite and and the color combinations are they're extraordinary I mean it's like you're painting with a painter's palette yeah I've always been um, I've always been an artist um, since I was a girl um, high school I've always been a uh, into art and different things um, and I just think it was because of the school the freedom school I remember um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Gajit Juni Fox mm. um, that's who I remember coming into the school when I was a little girl and she always would teach us different types of uh, projects using different media and like clay and like painting and you know, we got to do all kinds of stuff, and so um, they taught us how to sew, and um, and that's what my daughter is learning. My oldest daughter, um, they're teaching them to quilt and cook and um, life skills. Life skills, yeah. yeah. So important. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Because now, because of that, I'm able to support my family. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah. So that's, keep this in mind when you're thinking about uh, supporting the project and you're thinking about what level you want to get involved at. And, uh, you know, I want to take a minute to also give a big shout out to Bethany Yarrow. And uh, we, we right now, we are, we are at the Waterfall House, which is a, an early 19th century 
uh, roadside inn, and and it's just an incredible gathering mm-hmm. space. Yeah. And Bethany has graciously and so generously made this available uh, to you and many from the Mohawk community for the mm-hmm. Three Sister Sovereignty Project, yeah, and to get things going, and also to do ceremony here yeah. Yeah. back mm-hmm. on the ancestral lands, right? And yeah. just yesterday, uh, when you know uh, we're recording on a real day at a real time, and this does not air live, and so mm-hmm. just yesterday, uh, from the recording here. Um, was a, a beautiful ceremony right here on this land yeah, and yeah. Uh, just perched above the the waterfall. Yeah. And uh, I, I know that there's a lot that occurs in ceremony we, we don't talk about and, and record, but maybe you could just share a, a little bit about uh, uh, what was that yesterday and, and, and why was that important to be able to do right here on this land? Uh, well, we did um, the moon ceremony and... Uh... It was just the way to bring the women back here and connect spiritually with um, with the waterfall, um, the moon, um, because the moon is really important for for women, um, and that's our connection, you know, through our moon time, through child childbirth, um, through our plants growing all kinds of things that you know we really need the moon the, the moon plays a really huge role in our everyday lives and it's really important that we acknowledge her and thank her you know every month when she's at her most powerfulness you know mm-hmm. mm. so that was actually i don't know if that was the hunter's moon <coughs> or what moon beaver? beaver moon Someone or hunter's beaver. moon so usually we try to come together on a full moon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and do our, our women's ceremony, our women's lodge then um, to uh, connect, manifest, mm-hmm. yeah. open the portal. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's 13 moons in the year. Right. 13 um, pieces of a turtle shell for Turtle Island. Uh-huh. And... Um, that's really what we follow is the yeah. 13 moons. We don't really follow the 12 month calendar. Right. You know, our yeah. our uh, ceremonies are based off of the 13 moons, mm-hmm. that moon cycle. And even for like our viewers, I mean, if you think about when you're like tapping into the full moon or you want to keep track of the full moon on your calendars, it's always good to know when the full moons are because the the strength of the moon is very uh, magnetic and some people don't know that sometimes what they're feeling is just the full moon and how to let things go on the full moon because our bodies are like a large percentage of water content mm. and the full moon has the power to create tsunamis off of the oceans mm. you know the full moon is what creates the tides so our bodies are water so it's important that you take that time on the full moon to do what you gotta do um, mm. because it is pretty tight it's intense out there around the full moon mm. if you don't know what a full moon is mm. you know so yeah yeah it's interesting that all around the world the number 13 has tremendous significance mm-hmm. around the the female aspect of the divine the goddess energy and uh, there, there are some amazing um, aspects of this number 13 that I'm sure we could talk about some other time in more depth. Mm -hmm. Um, And and for those of you who are familiar with the Fibonacci series, it's in that series of numbers as well. And um, there's some really beautiful knowledge to unpack Mm -hmm. around that. Yeah. To understand, I think, more fully our human experience here. And, and, you know, I think if the entire planet could understand (laughs) how the full moon is, Mm. then, like there'd be an immense amount of peace Mm -hmm. because everybody would be acknowledging the full moon Mm -hmm. and its powers and you know honoring the full moon and also taking that time to let things go issues Mm. go whatever is bothering them or take a salt bath to like cleanse their energy or any type of ritual that they can find to do around the full moon just to get back into that scunnel like that peace you know enjoy yeah. I mean yeah I think that the planet would totally 
it'd be a different vibration and frequency. Yeah. Be happy. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Salt baths are a great idea. I'll mention mm -hmm. something about salt baths in yeah. just a minute. And I want to I want to take a, a second to remind our audience that this is the Why on Earth Community Stewardship and Sustainability Podcast Series, and we are in Central New York at the Waterfall House at the Three Sisters Sovereignty Project, and uh, we're visiting with Gawoniesta Jock, uh, Fallon Jacobs, and Tiffany Cook and uh, talking about what's getting underway here with the project. And I want to take a moment to thank all of the sponsors that make this series possible through the Why on Earth community. And on that note of the joy and peace, we, through the Why on Earth community, we are doing community mobilization work uh, throughout the country and throughout society. And we focus on soil regeneration and climate action. And we have a third leg, which is culture of kindness. And it's so important that we each as individuals are cultivating this peace, this joy, this kindness with everything we're doing. And uh, uh, it's a lot of folks who are making this work possible. And I want to just give a special shout out to Patagonia, to Purium, uh, Beauty Counter, Earth Coast Productions, the Lidge Family Foundation, the International Society of Sustainability Professionals, and of course, Waylay Waters, which is the handcrafted bathing salt, soaking salt, hemp infused uh, aromatherapy that uh, are, are just a beautiful medicine, a beautiful way to help yourself uh, relax after a long day or uh, recover from some aches and pains or whatever it might be, right? It's mm -hmm. uh, really wonderful. And we, we have some special links with Beauty Counter and Purium. If you go to the whyonearth.org website, and you want to purchase uh, from those companies using the Why on Earth link or code, uh, some of those proceeds will come back and support the nonprofit. And of course, Waylay Waters, not everyone knows, I make these by hand. And uh, if, if you want to get involved with our monthly membership program at a certain level, you can uh, sign up for our monthly uh, Waylay Waters uh, salt bath program and get those mailed to you on a regular monthly mm -hmm. basis. Um, and I want to also just remind you to go to threesistersproject.org to learn more about the Three Sisters Sovereignty Project and to get involved in support with your financial um, contributions to the project, which is through gofundme.com uh, slash f slash three sisters sov, S-O-V at the end there. And um, wow, I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm so thrilled about everything that's getting underway here and I'm really excited we've got this opportunity to sit and visit a bit with, yeah. with our audience and get some more folks involved with what's happening. And um, uh, I'm wondering, uh, Tiffany, if uh, you're thinking about, you know, here we are heading into the winter months, and when you're thinking about coming back uh, through the springtime mm -hmm. and what's going to be happening here, what, what do you envision that is maybe most exciting or brings you most joy about what you foresee next year? Um, I really just can't wait to get the gardens going. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and have all the kids here for the summer and working in it. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to sing our songs, our yes. seed songs. Yeah. Yes, absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, and I know after Hunter Moon, Soon comes one of my favorites, I think, the rest moon. Oh, yeah. I, like, I like that idea. Yeah. And then, <laughs> the hibernation moon. Yeah, the hibernation yeah, moon. Yeah, that's the one that gets me. It's coming up. <laughs> and then soon after that is the planting moon, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the activities of soil, of course, is very active in the winter, and mm -hmm. it's not too far off now that uh, we're getting some of those seeds started, right? Yep. I'll plant a lot inside and get them started probably like February. Yeah. So. Right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, beautiful. And I'm wondering before we wrap up our conversation for today, mm -hmm. is there anything else any of you would like to share with our audience about the project, about your work, about your vision for the future? The project's awesome. Go fund me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, I just think that we're just at a beautiful, maybe uh a beautiful point um, where you know we're looking we're looking to move forward with the project um, just to help heal the people um, 
in our future, really. And it, it's not, it doesn't have to be so specific. We're very friendly people and we're very open, you know. So if any, if visitors or anyone who wants to come and learn more or stuff like that, like we're always open to that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I'm just looking forward to bringing our people back and bringing them home and um, just being able to get reconnected and, you know, just just to be able to um, find that missing piece to their puzzle and really, um, because for, for a lot of us, you know, we, we don't know, like, we don't know that places like this exist or that we even have an opportunity, mm. you know, to be able to come back, you know, and like, um, well, yeah, because before, like, we're, we're, we've had, we've had some history right traumatic history even yeah. in, in, even if we had wanted to build a larger village somewhere then we'd have to um we'd have to just reclaim the land like and there's a lot of fighting and sometimes we're just tired of fighting mm -hmm. we don't want to fight we don't want to have to fight for everything that we have just to be able to breathe mm -hmm. you know and so now when we have beautiful opportunities like this thank you bethany mm -hmm. um that it's just very, uh, I can't, there's not really any words to put to that, like yeah. how much respect or how grateful I am that there's this opportunity to be able to build something beautiful uh, for the people. And I, I love how others in the community right around here with mm -hmm. European ancestry mm -hmm. are stepping up and helping mm -hmm. out and saying hey we've got some land we mm -hmm. can make available i yeah. mean it's it's absolutely beautiful yeah. how people are responding it yeah it's yeah. almost um like uh takes a moment to process yeah yeah it does especially because of you know what we've been through and what it mm -hmm. normally takes for us to you know want to do something like this you know yeah. where we are really used to having to fight like that's even being back home in Akwazasana every day, we have to fight for who we are and fight for what we believe in. And we're constantly fighting mm -hmm. in that flight or fight mode, yeah. you know. That really gets in the way of the joy and peace thing I've noticed. Yeah, it for, does. For me. It you know, does. You, you <laughs> want to use your energy to create or build yeah. or, you know, manifest or in a helpful way. You don't want to have to change your energy to have to fight to, yeah. you know? And so there's like two different, there's many different ways you could use your energy and why not use, why not spend your, mm. your time or your essence um, during your younger years to put in the work at that time and um, create and build, right? Yes, yeah. And really it's just, it's just like that in Akwizasana because uh, like the population's growing and the land is not growing. And the land is sick there. Yeah. And so, like the people, you know, mm. it's just Naturally people are people multiplying. Are sick too. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I absolutely admire the courage <laughs> that each of you shows and your leadership. And from my perspective, it's 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 a real uh, humble honor to have an opportunity to be a part of this in a small way. Mm -hmm. and to help share the story of what you're doing. And I, I know there are a lot of folks in our Why on Earth community living in lots of different places who, as I've mentioned just a little about this project, are so excited to hear about it. And I know there are a lot of folks who will want to hear more mm -hmm. as things are developing. Mm -hmm. So uh, just a, a big, huge thank you uh, for doing what you're doing and uh, thank you for taking the time to visit with us and share share a bit with us. Can I say that? Yeah. Say it. What is it? Nyawakoa. Nyawakoa. That's a big yeah. thank you. Nyawakoa. <laughs> yeah. Nyawakoa. And uh, I'm also lear learning a few words slowly but surely, and I know the short way to say goodbye, but maybe before we sign off, we could say a little bit of a, a blessing or a longer goodbye uh, in in the Mohawk language, if you guys would like to. Or till next time. Yeah. Well, 
When we say ana, that means goodbye. Okay. Um, we also say onagiwahe, like I'll see you later, you know? Onagiwahe. Yeah. Um, our goodbye is pretty short, but when we want to, when we know we're going to see you again, maybe later, today, tomorrow. Yeah. Onagiwahe. Onagiwahe. Mm -hmm. And how do we say thank you for all of your support? Um, nyawakoa. Um, just nyawakoa, you know, like that, yeah. that word really speaks. Yeah. You know, a lot. Cool. Beautiful. Well, before we sign off, is there anything you guys would like to say? I already said what I wanted to say. Mm hmm no, I'm I'm just really um excited to really get the ball rolling and get right into this and um I just want the people to really know that, you know, there's another there's a place cuz a lot of people are in there it's starting to to uh, like what are we going to do? You know, a lot of people are asking me what am I gonna do what are we gonna do you know so I just can't wait to let them know that there's a place you know yeah. with lots of medicine and pine and clean water and fresh clean air water. a lot of deer yep. yeah. Well, yeah and Tiffany anything you want to say um I think basically we're planting the seed for our future yeah. it's like people that plant a tree never ever get to enjoy the shade of that tree they're mm. planting it for our future mm. our future grandchildren mm -hmm. great grandchildren and really we're um mm. we're just you know um fulfilling our our responsibilities as as mothers as caretakers of the land, um, you know, we're doing what, this is what we're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, you know, with that, we'll, we'll sign off for now. So, goodbye, everybody. Onagiwahe. The Why on Earth Community Stewardship and Sustainability podcast series is hosted by Aaron William Perry, author, thought leader, and executive consultant. The podcast and video recordings are made possible by the generous support of people like you. To sign up as a daily, weekly, or monthly supporter, please visit whyonearth.org backslash support. Support packages start at just $1 per month. The podcast series is also sponsored by several corporate and organization sponsors. You can get discounts on their products and services using the code Why on Earth, all one word with a Y. These sponsors are listed on the whyonearth.org backslash support page. If you found this particular podcast episode especially insightful, informative, or inspiring, please pass it on and share it with a friend whom you think will also enjoy it. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support. And thank you for being a part of the Why on Earth community.